In today's episode, we're going to give you insider access to information about the crypto industry that no one knows about yet. We met with hundreds of different projects in the Web3 space, and today we're going to give you insider information that nobody else has. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto, from beginner tips to expert picks. Use this as fuel for your investing journey, because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Beam Pod is sponsored by BitGet. BitGet is the most user-friendly and secure crypto trading platform for both beginners and experienced traders. BitGet is the best place to not only trade Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also all the small cap gems that we discuss every day. With 24 seven customer support, leverage trading, and a wide array of other advanced features, BitGet sets itself apart from every other centralized exchange. Through Beanstalk's official partnership with BitGet, you'll receive 15% off all trading fees when you sign up using the referral link in the description. All views expressed by speakers on the BeanPod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the BeanPod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. This is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today we have a very special episode where we're going to be giving you insider information from the crypto industry that we were exclusively lucky to get the chance to find out in our latest trip. So we traveled halfway around the world, went to Singapore, Token 2049, and had an opportunity to have exclusive access to the hottest trends, the lightest narratives, and got to meet teams the ones that nobody else gets to see behind the scenes. And it really gave us a firsthand look as to what's being built, what's happening. And we're going to provide that to you today in today's episode, because first of all, the tickets are extremely expensive to get to. The jet lag is brutal (laughs) (laughs) and all these things. But, you know, when you're on crypto Twitter or you're watching these YouTube episodes, you you never really get a chance to see the teams that are working behind the scenes. And we found it was really helpful to speak to these people and how passionate they are and and what they're actually building. And I think there's going to be a lot of value in this episode because A, we found out a lot of the new trends. We identified some projects that haven't launched yet. So when we talk about those, you'll be prepared for them. And the last thing is just like how informative and what's actually happening in the Web3 space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very important episode to watch to the end today because... Ultimately, you can use this insider information to make moves in your portfolio that are going to make you make money in the future, right? If you know what's coming, if you know what projects are building, if you know what narratives are next, if you know what to avoid, then you can, I mean, honestly, make more money, grow your portfolio, right? So if you like this kind of insider information, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we keep doing these on and on in the future. So the first thing I want to say is how divided the Web3 world is. I noticed there's a lot of, (laughs) in particular, it seemed like on the Solana chain, there's a lot of like the D-Gen community. Mm. You know, there's the f- some of the fights that broke out between certain, <laughs> certain KOLs and all this stuff, out the, f- the fight night and all that stuff, which is absolutely ridiculous. And that's a lot of the banter and stuff that gains traction on Twitter and on X. It's the stuff you see in like, all oh, the crypto world, you know? Mm. But on the, other side of the ha- on the other side of the coin, when you meet with these projects, man, they're face down building. They're working 24 hours a day. They know their shit. You know, we've been to a bunch of different conferences and I have to say that this one by far that over the past three years, the different conferences we've been to, this is by far the web three industry now has taken that next step where everybody knows their, knows their stuff. They're passionate, head down. They can answer every single question you threw their way. Mm. So I thought there was like that discrepancy and it's really amazing to see all outside of crypto Twitter and all this, the narrative, the, the bubble that we live in mm. and get to see these teams firsthand. Yeah. hundred percent. I think the divide is like, okay, you have crypto Twitter, which is full of anonymous shillers, scams, memes, rugs, and you know, it is an echo bubble, right? So when you on crypto Twitter every day, you know, especially over the last like six months of downward shop, you can see, Oh, nothing's happening in crypto. It's all scams, it's all bullshit, which, you know, if you're on crypto Twitter, I don't blame you. That is what it looks like. But then when you go to a conference, You meet hundreds of teams. You see there's real people with real faces building actual platforms with huge backers and institutional money that are solving real problems. And, you know, there wasn't a lot lot of mention of meme coins at this conference. It was like real shit. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, it's quite bullish when you go to the conference and you actually see what is actually being built in the Web3 industry. It makes me, you know me, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm always positive. I'm always basically bullish about the crypto in general, but it really adds to that thesis when you go to the, the, 
the actual conference and see what's being done. And a few of the projects and narratives we're going to talk about later in this episode, it is actually humbling, right? Because, you know, we, we work in this space every day. And we think we know everything. And we think we see, we know all the projects. And you go to this conference, like, holy shit. Yeah, there's, there's hundreds of projects that we've never even heard of yeah, that some of them haven't launched yet. And it's like, wow, this is this is the best thing I've ever seen. Mm. So it's it's really interesting. We've got some good alpha for you guys. Some of the feedback I remember hearing from a bunch of the different tents and people that we met was they've been decimated by d- different KOLs in the industry, uh, predatory VCs. And that's posed a real challenge for a lot of these projects who have been working for years and, you know, their chart looks like shit. And it has nothing to do with, you know, the development. It has everything to do with how the predatory VCs took a bunch of money, the KOLs are dumping, all these things. So I think what we're going to start to see in the near future, and we're seeing this, we recently saw this with the other verse, um, is the tokenomic adjustment so that there's a sustain, the chart will look a lot better. Like these teams have to get a little bit more crafty in terms of how they design the tokenomics. Yeah. So that retail investors win, so the project wins, all these things. So there's a lot more thought, I feel like, that's going into that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, the KOLs, which is key opinion leaders, which is what Nifty and I, you know, technically are, they have a, a very bad rep in the industry right now. And they should because you have all these, again, these anonymous shillers, these guys that just work with these projects, quote unquote, work with the projects, take their tokens at launch and just absolutely dump. Every time they get their tokens, they dump and they just destroy projects. And it's sad to see because when you meet real people that have families and they're building, these are, these are real companies, right? With a hundred employees trying to do something. And then you have these fucking guys with penguin pictures at home yeah. just dumping their projects and killing them. Yeah. It's really sad to see. So I, I think you're going to see a shift to quality, hopefully more like doxed, real content creators like us that are forthcoming and honest about what we're doing. So I, yeah, I think, again, like it's still a young industry, right? And mm. everyone's learning. But um, yeah, it is sad to see that. So one of the things that caught my eye, one of the first projects, we had a chance to meet the Block Asset team. Man, those guys are cool. Mm. I love those guys. Yep. Super, super lovely. They are onboarding some incredible individuals who work for some world renowned teams. And this platform I think is going to do wonders over the next fuck. I want to say like the next six months, but maybe like six months to a year or so they're going to do some things that are so revolutionary to the gamble space to gambling in general that no other platform has ever done. And I mean, if you're a block holder, you're in for a treat. Yeah, the combination of the uh, top-level executives they're onboarding, plus their partnership with the UFC, which is really just starting. You can just see these guys are dialed in. Like, the amount of catalyst that Block has. We always call it the most undervalued coin on Solana. And when you meet them in person, that thesis just holds true, right? Uh, for me, you know, talking now into moving into, like, the actual projects and narratives, one of the things that really struck to me is it's just the amount of new layer ones, right? Like, there's so many new and innovative layer ones. There wasn't a ton of, like gaming tents for example or like metaverse tents or you know real world asset tents it was a ton of new layer ones and what that kind of says to me is like all right we've seen how successful solana was in in bringing in new investors to crypto you know it's cheap it's fast it's approachable i think what people are seeing is like this is the way forward for mass adoption for crypto we need to keep innovating with layer ones because if you bring out a new fast cheap easy to use layer one, that's how you're going to bring, you know, everyone always says, bring the next million people, bring the next billion people into crypto. We need to keep making layer ones better and then the ecosystems can grow with dApps that are building on that. And there's so many new layer ones that are going to be launching in the next six to 12 months that we met their teams that it's a really exciting space right now. Yeah, like infrastructure plays, right? Mm. Uh, one of them that we caught, caught our eye with U2U. Uh, and this is a new modular layer one and it seems to surround itself all around Deepin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're going to be launching a node sale and all these things. And with that node sale, which I found really unique, was anybody operating one of them will receive rewards, not just from the U2U network, but from all the other deep in plays that exist within the ecosystem. Mm. So you're going to be receiving rewards from like every single project in that in the, yeah. in, in the ecosystem there. That's pretty unique. Very, uh, very cool, that one. Another one is Rails. Yeah. You know, if you've been following our channel for a while, you know we tend to lean towards institutional backed, like working with the regulations and banks, you know, projects like Ondo Finance. We really like Ondo Finance. So another one that's kind of similar to that in terms of its institutional connections, working with banks is Rails, R-A-Y-L-S. Um, they've got some really interesting things coming in the tokenization, real world assets, banks, institutions. So that's going to be a name I'm looking out for in the future. Yeah, I'm hearing some, some of the biggest names on the planet. Banks that you're going to recognize mm. are already utilizing them as like a, a test pilot, if you will. Yep. And that's pretty rare to have, 
you know, banks that you're all going to be familiar with to be working yeah. with this project. I think they're backed by Circle as well. Yeah, like complying with regulations, yeah. right? That's the key. Uh, another one interesting was Fraun AI. Mm. Obviously, you know, I said there's not a lot of narratives plays that we saw at the conference other than AI. I mean, AI is everywhere. There's AI layer one. There's AI DeFi. There's AI everything, right? Fraun AI struck us to be a, a different one again because, well, we met the founder, right? And like this guy is dialed in. Yeah, yeah. He's going to every conference. He's meeting everyone. He's raising like big capital from actual VCs. This isn't just some like vaporware, quote unquote, AI project. This is one of the best looking AI projects. Uh, it seems to be extremely legit. And again, like we had no idea about this project no. until we went there and just got lucky to meet this guy. So that's one we're going to be looking at as well. It's a dynamic layer zero, layer one yeah. chain that has AI built into it, yeah. into the actual chain itself. I like that. So it's not just like, like you said, vaporware that's adding chat GPT to it. Yep. So that's really cool. They have a token launching soon as well. So um, that that's a unique one. Another one that struck us again. You can tell a lot from two things, like the quality of the the, the tent and the and you know the display they have and how engaging the team is. Like if you sometimes we would walk up to a tent and like I don't know, the team just looks at us and like eh. I don't know. These guys don't look like they're anything, so they just don't even talk to us. Humanity Protocol. Mm. Like we get there, the guy's super friendly, super engaging, brings us out the demo. So Humanity Protocol is like kind of a more decentralized version of Worldcoin. Worldcoin, like you scan your eye and it's this decentralized ID, all that kind of stuff. Humanity Protocol is the, the knock against Worldcoin is it's very centralized, you know, run by Sam Altman, who is probably evil and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Humanity Protocol is like a decentralized version that scans your palm, and then there's all these integrations. They had the palm scanners there. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, like it was seamless, right? It's the demo was there. Yeah. Um, so that's a very cool one that I'll probably be keeping my eye on as well. And with that one, too, it's less invasive. Mm-hmm. You know, sa- scanning your eyes, a bit feel, it just feels like too invasive. Yeah. I think people are going to be more inclined to put their palm out yep. to get that scanned. And that's going to, I think the adoption is going to be insane because... People who want to take part in these airdrops, they're doing all this work, but then the insiders are using all their bots and they're collecting all the airdrops mm-hmm. and you can't win. With this, it's improving. It's like co- more cost effective for the teams and it ensures that they're legitimate users. So when some of these chains claim that they have 140,000 users, those might just be wallets. Yes. And one guy has created 140,000 wallets. Right. This is for sure going to have a unique identifier. It's like, no, this is a real person. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna actually going to start to change the metrics in the entire Web3 industry. Yeah, 100%. And one thing I do want to mention about uh, gaming in particular, because <coughs> you know we, we all know, and it seems so natural, that gaming will be one of the, their narratives that when it does take off, can actually get millions and millions of people and billions of dollars into crypto. There weren't a ton of gaming tents, but we did meet a few gaming projects, and they showed us their demos that actually look extremely legit. I mean, the knock on gaming, and, and we've been pounding the table on this, is the quality of the games in crypto just isn't there yet, right? But that's because it takes years to build a real game. You can't just throw together some 2D pixely garbage and be like, oh, this is going to onboard people. It's never going to work. No. Like if, you look, if you're actually a gamer, you know about the industry, it takes EA, it takes Rockstar. These guys take five, six years, seven years to build a game. One game. Right? Yeah. So like a lot of these games have been in development for many years. I think one of them was Edge of Chaos. That game looks sick. That looks really cool. Like, it looks like a real game that you played on, like, PS5 or something, yeah. right? Like, it was a massive open-world battle game. With, like, a thousand people on one map. Yeah, like, open-world, like, really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we, we met a guy from the Katana Inu team who was working on a new game. Uh, what was it? Gangsta something? Grand Gangsta City. Grand Gangsta City, like, kind of like a GTA style. Like, really, really cool. But you could tell his passion for gaming. Yeah. Like, that guy was riled up. Like yeah. He loves He was it. getting me. Like, I was I was yeah. riled up, too. I think Katana Inu has been in uh, development for it's a good looking game. many, many years. Yeah. And you can see why. And you could s- he showed us their whole, like, in-house dev mm-hmm. team mm-hmm. and where they all work and all yep. these things. So, there is there is the gaming sector. It is making huge coming. strides. It's coming. Huge strides. For sure. So, I think what you're going to see over the next, like, maybe 12 months is there will be some quality games coming out. And I think it'll light that sector on fire. So, it was really interesting to meet, like, the founders of these up-and-coming games and different narratives. So write those names down that we just discussed because those are some of the top projects that we didn't know about that we could be looking forward to seeing in the future. Yeah, so look, there's a bit of alpha for you. Those are some of the projects that really caught our eye. Um, again, you know, some of the things we are recognizing in, in the industry. Mm-hmm. And it is humbling to see there are teams out there working hard. So, you know, whenever you're investing, whenever you're researching your projects, know that there are real faces and real teams actually putting a lot of hard work into their projects. And one, one comment I wanted to make on my experience in Singapore in general, well, first of all, Singapore, like, you know, amazing city. The, as you said, the conference was so well run. Like we've been to, we went to Bitcoin Miami two years ago. We went to Consensus in Austin last year. And then this year, Token 2049 in Singapore. This is like the big leagues compared to those conferences. <laughs> Way more booths, 
way more projects. People are just more professional. More education, yeah. Just like way more, yeah. Everyone's way more dialed in. The conference itself was so smooth. Everyone was so organized, which is like Singapore as a city. It's too hot there for me though. <laughs> the heat and humidity is out of control. Yeah. But the side events, I was thinking about the side events. Like there were so many side events at this particular conference. Like when we were in Austin and Miami, like there was a few and kind of most people going to the same ones. But on any given night in Singapore, there was like 30 side events and you could never track down where anyone was. And I think what that speaks to in the crypto industry right now is that there's just so many projects, so many projects that have money to spend that are looking for attention and eyes from retail investors, from KOLs, from everyone. And that's why they're putting on these side events, mm. right? On any given night, there was like, we got invited to like 20 different events. It's like, okay, we can't do that. Um, and you can, t- <laughs> you can tell a lot about a project from the event. Oh yeah, right. I you- forgot about that one. <laughs> so like, for example, we went to the Tron Dow event. That and like, it was the worst event I've ever been to. You literally don't... You- Dumped I, your Tron. As soon as we left the event, you're like, I'm fucking selling my Tron. I sold every piece of Tron I had after that. It event. was just absolutely garbage. Yeah. And uh, that was, like, I wonder if that, like, speaks to the chain itself. Is it just all hokey pokey? Yeah. Smoke and mirrors? Because when they're holding their event in a mall, <laughs> when everybody else is like, people are putting on top, people are putting events on top of the roof. Yeah. When you claim to be one of the best chains, you got the most money, all these things. They're you think in a mall. They're in a mall. There was no no drinks, oh, no man. food. It was bullshit. It was, yeah, it was garbage. It was, gar- it was pure. There was piss all over the floor. There was piss all over the floor. It yeah. was disgusting. It yeah. was the worst event by yeah. far. And then we went to the Aptos event, and yeah. that was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. Like, that was up here on the top of Mar- Marina Bay Sands. We met some really cool people that was very well organized. Free, great drinks, good food, good people. That was a good vibe. Um, we went to, what, a Kit Protocol. was a pretty good event. We liked that one. We worked with them. Um, so, yeah, like, you could tell just there's so many different events. So, that was really interesting to see as well. Overall, like, I think my general comment on the conference and and the alpha that we got is, like, there is really, really good things happening in crypto. Don't get so locked in in the echo bubble of crypto Twitter, which is just full of scammers and ruggers and anonymous shillers. If you are lucky enough to be able to go to one of these events and see what's actually happening in crypto and see through the bullshit, there's so many real teams that are building amazing projects. And if we continue to see the positive market momentum, I think you're going to see a lot of these projects launch and really flourish. Absolutely. Hey, make sure you guys tune into the next episode. That one is going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.